Hey everyone and welcome to Tanya Summerton Divorce Angel. Today I'm going to provide you with tip number three. So over the last two days we've done tip number one which was your divorce folder and making sure that you've got your divorce folder all um, organized and comprehensive to save you some money anywhere between a few hundred to a few thousand dollars. Um, the second tip which I provided yesterday was on making sure that you talk to the right person. So not talking to your lawyer about um, things that are emotionally upsetting you or phone conversations that you've had with your ex-partner or things that you just don't feel like are going right, it, you know, things you're struggling with. Do the right thing, spend really good money and go to a subject matter expert, whether that be a counsellor or a GP or someone like that, that can put you on the right track. And the money that you save talking to a counsellor will definitely save you a fortune when talking to your lawyer because your lawyer's not there, um, they're not... Um, they're not um, educated in providing any emotional support or uh, helping you deal with, with rough times. So make sure that you, um, on your team of experts, that you have uh, a really good counsellor and someone that you can talk to. So today I wanted to talk to you about my third tip and it's something that I see uh, regularly with people that have previously been divorced or I see it quite often with the other partners of my clients. So it's something that's not done um, very often in, main, in the mainstream when you go to a lawyer. A lawyer is not a financial advisor. A lawyer does not know about whether you can afford to keep a property or you can't afford to keep a property or whether you should be keeping your money in superannuation or you should be taking that money out of your superannuation and taking a cash component. They can advise you on what happens when you do transfer super from one person to another and how it's not a dollar for dollar transfer and things like that, but they can't actually provide you with proper due diligence when it comes to can I actually keep this asset or not. So in a lot of cases, clients will go to a lawyer and they will say, uh, I want to keep the family home because there's an emotional attachment to the family home. We've all had one, we've all, you know, we love them, we put all our care into them, we maintain them, our kids are born there, um, special occasions and things like that. So in a lot of cases, we want to keep the family home. So I've seen this over and over again over probably the last um, probably three months where we've been fighting over assets that one client or the other just financially cannot keep, whether that be due to serviceability for a loan, whether that be that they don't have enough equity to keep the property, or it could even just be that the property is really, really ran down. So they might, in the, in the um, divorce or the financial separation, they might be able to keep the property, but once they've kept the property, the upkeep is just too much for them and they're not able to to live the same standard of living that maybe they were before they got divorced and the house just gets you know maybe more and more run down or in some cases where and and this has happened recently where we've had clients that have had investment properties and one side has wanted to keep x amount of investment properties where um, our clients you know, obviously because we work together holistically, have known that they can't afford to keep them because they can't service them. And the other side's then in the divorce been able to get the properties that he or she wanted, but then unfortunately hasn't been able to keep them. So there's been a title transfer, they have to go and get their mortgages uh, re refinanced and they just can't keep the property anywhere. anyway. So they've spent an absolute fortune. And one that comes to mind to me was one gentleman that spent up to 50 grand fighting for three properties that he had to have to little did he know that he couldn't keep them anyway because he just could not service the loans. So, yeah, what I'm saying is make sure if you don't work with a team like mine, that when you go to your lawyer, um, before you actually talk to them, you've gone and seen either a financial advisor or a mortgage broker, you sit down, you have a look at your assets and your liabilities and go to your lawyer with a plan of what assets you want to keep and why. And look at those assets and see what 
what vehicle they will be able to provide you when it comes to financial abundance. So is by keeping the house actually going to actually decrease your overall wealth because you've, it's run down and when you finally do go and sell it, you're not going to get much for it? Or are you best off not to keep your primary place of residence and actually look at maybe using that money that you get out of your divorce to purchase an investment property, some shares, um, speak to your financial advisor. It could be, you know, some managed funds or something like that. And something else that's very, and it, it's extremely important, is always look at your superannuation and make sure rather than transferring super from person to person, uh, is it best to keep your money in super or are you best because you're a lower income earner or, you know, you really, your, your plan is to get a house, is it better for you to get a cash component? So all of these questions need to be answered and they should be answered by the subject matter experts, which are your financial advisor with the help of a mortgage broker to make sure that you can afford to keep your properties. And then you go to your lawyer with that information and you tell them this is what I want to keep and this is why and then you fight for those assets so um, that would be my third tip so if you'd like to contact me please do I am Tanya Summerton the divorce angel my purpose in life is to help people get through divorce as um, amicably and seamlessly as possible and we do that with a team of experts so I have a five-step process and um, my clients, even though getting divorced is just awful, they come out the other side um, feeling like they are empowered and able to take on the world. So please give me a call, get on my website, www.tanyasummerton.com, or you can find me on Facebook under Divorce Angel. So thanks very much, and I'll catch you again tomorrow with my fourth tip for the week. <laughs>